Now, 7 News continues with High School Red Zone. The Christchurch Cavaliers traveled on down to McCormick trying to make it 10 in a row in their series with the Chiefs. Deshaun Reeder, nice run upended, but it sets up a Reader score. On in he goes. Cavaliers move on to 4 and 1 on the season, 2 and 0 in Region 11A as they are looking like a team to beat in the 1A ranks. Welcome back in, but the big showdown in that region and in the classification, number one and unbeaten St. Joe's against Southside Christian, best 0-3 team on the planet. And Southside Christian hadn't played the past couple of weeks. They've got Ja'Cory Martin. You got him on your team, you got a chance. That made it 21-7, 24-7 Sabres in the third. Walker Wood later on 73 yards to Harrison Zinken. Pulls St. Joe's within 10. Knights were trying to get to 6-0 for the first time since 2013, but the Sabres answer. Kyler Zimmerman into the end zone for Southside Christian. They get their first win of the year. They open up 1-0 in the region. Mike Sonneborn talking afterward about his team taking down number one. You know, it's weird. I feel like the start of the year is the reason why we won tonight, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we tested ourselves with some really, really too stiff competition. I think, like I, I know we are, I think you got to do that to get yourself ready for things like this. Listen, that's a well-coached football team. They were ranked number one. You know, those are good guys, good coaches, and they're good players over there. But, you know, our guys were ready. You shouldn't sell those guys short. They're actually number 10 in this week's SC Prep Football Media Poll. And now they've knocked off number one. They will move up and likely be moving on maybe toward another state title. They've won the last two. Wren and Hillcrest go at it just down the road from Southside Christian. Rams trying to get to 6-0 for the first time since 1995. The smoke from the entry celebration had yet to clear when Bennett Judy through the gloaming finds Logan Coldren. 12 yards and a 7-0 Rams lead. Judy, Judy, Judy. Yeah, there he is finding Coldren again. And Hillcrest moves on to the win. You know, Wren's 0-5 for the first time since 2001. Hannah and Lawrence doing battle. Lawrence team for a second straight week without its longtime starting quarterback, James Rawl. He was lost to a major knee injury for the season. Tough team to play, whether you're at full strength or not. Hannah, Jalen Bowles makes it 31-7 Jackets in the third quarter. Then in the fourth, Hannah's Kenny Fretwell. Little quarterback keep. What a good job he does running that O. And Hannah gets the win. Even series just about. Lawrence now leads at 17 to 16 as Hannah takes him down tonight, 38 to 7. Wade Hampton and Mann. Generals trying for a four wins in a season for the first time in a while. Mann trying to bounce back after a couple of losses. Ethan Anderson, Michael McClellan made it 7-0. O.J. Jones, big fella out of the backfield, makes it 14 zip. Patriots, they go on to the win. They've won five out of six in the series, and they get their fourth victory on the year as they win decisively against the guys from not far away. Boiling Springs goes over to Clover, takes on the Blue Eagles. After a big win on the road last week for the Bulldogs, Cam Foster and company, Taji Nedbit. On the receiving end, Nesbitt trying to make the most of the yards. Later on, Jeremiah Thomas gets stopped for a loss, kind of how it went for the Bulldogs. They're shut out against Clover, Brian Lane's team, with the 26-0 win. Seneca trying for a fourth win on the year. Travel to Greenville County, taking on Woodmont. Matthew Crane on the receiving end. Able to weave his way and get all the way down to the three yard line. What a nice play by the head coach's son. And then Jackson Burnett, after making the throw, scampers in. Three yard touchdown, 7 0 Seneca. Woodmont answered to cut the lead to one, but Seneca gets the win. Their 10th in 12 meetings in a series. They hadn't played Woodmont since 09. Greer trying to bounce back from a one and four start, but tough place to do it is the home of the West Side Rams. Early on, though, Josh Runyon. Brock Diggins able to hang on after getting just popped oh, right there. Runyon took it in for the score. Greer led 7-0, but Jamar Boston and the Rams able to come back on the ensuing kickoff return. It's Boston going all the way. Two-point conversion was good, and Westside runs away from there to another victory. They're now 4-1 on the season. Easley and Southside get together. And the Green Wave trying to make it four straight wins after losing their first first meeting since 1973 for schools that really aren't all that far apart. Ethan Alexander in the third quarter for the Wave made it 35-0. And then Caleb Sutton with a nice keeper for a 30-yard run. And the Wave rolls over the Tigers. They get the shutout 42-zip. 
Pickens and Liberty. Rivals get together on the artificial turf at Liberty. It's all Pickens in this game. Landon Pace giving it to C.J. Hooper for the touchdown. Samuel Maul later got into the scoring act for the visitors. And after splitting the last six games against Liberty, Pickens gets the win. They knock off Liberty by the 42 to 7 final. Broom and Woodruff, couple of teams in the 3A ranks trying to find their identity before region play begins. Woodruff takes a 7 0 second quarter lead. Kamaje Brackett Brandon, Isaiah Brown, what a nice catch. Sets up a Jalen McGill touchdown and a 7 7 ball game. And then on the next drive, Brackett Brandon to Grayson Bradley. That set up a Brackett Brandon score. Broom actually had a rally in the second half. They go on to the win, 27 to 20 in a close fought game. Meanwhile, Chapman goes to Union County. Coleman Gray gets him off to a good start as the Panthers are trying to win for a fourth consecutive time against the Jackets. Gray, 34 yards on the QB keep, made it a seven nothing game. Ben Black then to Christian Means, keeping the family name held up high in the receiving core down there in Union County. Beautiful run. That led to a Jaquan Jeter touchdown, but it was the only TD of the night for Union County. Chapman knocks off the Yellow Jackets for a fourth straight time, decisively 31 to 6. Lander and Blue Ridge doing battle. Blue Ridge trying to win again in this series. They had a lead on Colton Link. Able to connect with Braden Moshter for the touchdown. Tucker Massey, though, comes back later on. And after the Landrum touchdown, Blue Ridge able to get the Massey score. There he goes, and Blue Ridge was on its way to the win. Big time over Landrum. When we come back, we'd head to Western North Carolina and beyond. It was a backyard battle. Could Hendersonville continue recent dominance in its series with Polk? It's just ahead, and so much more as the high school red zone continues.